Hi, I'm Jennifer from the Jennifer Lauren Gallery and welcome to the show I've curated at Carl Friedman Gallery in Margate called To All the Kings Who Have No Crowns. Today I'd like to take you on a small tour of the exhibition to talk a little bit about the artist with you, so follow me into the space. So the first artist we see here is Valerie Potter, who is a Margate-based artist, so she lives just down the road, and this is a series of recent embroideries, cross-stitch embroideries, that she did last year. Now Valerie is an artist in her mid to late 60s, who has never been to art school. Well, she did go to art school, they didn't treat her very well, she didn't really like it, so she dropped out. She started doing embroideries when she saw someone across the train platform from her doing embroideries and she felt really inspired. So these come from her imagination, she draws whatever's in her head out onto the fabric and then she cross stitches it. She's also done a couple of paintings in her time, these are actually from the 1980s, 1986 to be exact. These are really vibrant gouache paintings, again featuring things that come from her imagination. It features a lot about birth, death, religious iconography. They're quite humorous when you look at them, so I, I really recommend that you spend time looking at them online. I'm now going to introduce you to Pradeep Kumar, who is in his late 40s. He carves matchsticks and toothpicks. So it's a real joy to have them in this space. He lives in India and was born deaf. And whilst he was at school, he obviously didn't really concentrate very well. So he started carving some chalk. He then dropped out of school because it really wasn't for him. And then he got home and started experimenting with matchsticks and then moved on to toothpicks and spends four to six hours on each one, carving it and then painting a bit, waiting for the paint to dry, and then carving, uh, painting it a little bit more. So you really need to get in close to see the birds and the figures, the men and women that he carves in his work. I'll now introduce you to Margaret Rousseau, who's in her late 60s and actually only started drawing in 2016. So she used to work in the hospital for quite a lot of her life and then started drawing in 2016. These are things that either come from her dreams and her imagination, so the characters that she's made up that are quite whimsical, or quite often she draws current events that are happening in the news, and that features in her work, and they have fantastic titles, which I love to read. Drawing you round to the side, this is Eric Derechette. So Eric is in his mid-50s, and he attends a studio called La S. Grand Atelier, in Belgium and he's been going there since around 2005. He creates these with both hands at the same time. Sometimes he sits in front of them, sometimes he stands in front of them and you can see the marks on here. He'll draw with one hand and then the other and works into it like this. He loves to layer them up over several days using several different materials and sometimes it gets so thick that the paper might rip but he really doesn't mind that but it's a joy to look at this painting, it's so bright and colourful. Coming round to these, this is the first of Kate Redmore's work that we'll see in this exhibition, there's some in the next space as well. These are her suitcase people. Now Kate lives in London, she's in her early 60s, and she often collects things that she finds on the streets um, near Dalston, which is where she lives. So these are all suitcases or boxes that she's found on the street, all the other items inside them and for again things that she's found and then she makes the head out um, Peggy Mashley and other things and then creates a whole character so we've got Tallulah the Tourist, Railroad Jim, Sister Edith and the artist which we thought was very apt for this show on the end and inside the artist is the story of the artist's life. The final thing in this room is CJ Pyle. Now, CJ Pyle inspired the invite for this exhibition, and it's actually one of his drawings that we screen printed onto a 7 inch record sleeve. Normally, he draws onto the back of LP covers, and he's developed this uh, kind of woven style in pen that you can see really beautifully in all the examples in this gallery space. So, he hasn't been to art school, he's in his mid 60s, he lives um, in America. And this style kind of started around the year 2000 and has developed and become more complicated as the years have gone on. 
and now he's very well known for drawing on the back of LP covers. And I love knowing what's on the back of them. So sometimes it's ABBA, sometimes it's, it's just really cheesy records, which makes me smile. But his style on this side is recognisable as his, and it's a real privilege to have them in the gallery space today. Coming through into room two. I'll now show you the drawings of Kate Bradbury. So alongside her sculptures, she has a beautiful drawing style. She is completely self-taught. She draws on this very thin Chinese scroll paper. Sometimes she does a monoprint first onto the paper, and then she draws into it with just a black pen, or sometimes she just draws with a black pen onto the piece. Each one has an amazing title. She's very good with words. And the title of the shirt actually comes from the first painting when you enter, well, the first drawing when you enter this room called To All the Kings You Have in France. We thought it was very apt for the artists in this show to kind of utilise that title. And thank you to Kate for allowing us to use that. Behind me here is Haguna Gawa. She is an artist that lives in Japan who is in, uh, she's 26 years old and she normally draws on this very small kind of postcard sized paper and they're all imaginary creatures and beings that have come out of her imagination. So she often takes this paper out and about with her and works in cafes or on transport and whatever's in her mind at that time is then transformed onto the paper. And she often only works in black and white because it's a very cheap, easy to find, easy to use material that's worked within her budget. So this is Hakuna Gal. We then come back to a UK-based artist. This is Chris Neat, who lives currently up north. He did go to art school in the 1970s, but this work is very different to the work that he did when he was at art school. So he now calls this automatic drawing. So he sits at home with the board on his lap. These are all on MDF board. And he turns it as he goes, and he'll spend hours drawing onto these pieces, turning. So he'll start somewhere on the page and then he'll always anchor it to the edge and then from there it will develop and he never knows what's going to come out. Sometimes there's soul-like creatures that come out through them. But this is a series of three that we framed and then one of his biggest pieces to date is called Transformed that he did in 2020. And it's kind of white pencil in the background with white pen over the top of it and he painted the board black. And it's absolutely stunning. And when he looks at it at the end, he keeps turning it around until he feels the way it should be the right way up. And then he puts his initials at the bottom. And in his mind, that's the way the picture should be. So he believes that his hand is guided by some external force. And they're absolutely stunning. In very much contrast to these black and whites, this is Naramitsu Kukubo, who is also a Japanese artist. He's 26 years old and he draws these imaginary cities. Sometimes they're based on cities he might have seen in books, places that he may have travelled to, but quite often they're things that he might remember from his childhood, from TV programmes, from anything that might inspire him. What's lovely about Kukubo's work is, again, a bit like Chris, he draws on it from all sides of the paper, so he has a very low table in his house, and he sits around it, moving the paper around. So he completely disregards um, you know, perspective or anything like that. He often draws vehicles, ships, buildings, anything related to the city. He also quite often draws things related to the army as well. And then we've also included these two incredibly detailed longer works by Kakubo. He's produced three in this sort of size. You really need to get in close to see the detail. There's little people in there, there's text in Japanese. You can kind of follow it around. There's trains traveling across the path. This one has incredible swimming pool based things, tunnels from swimming pools, flues, not tunnels. But it's absolutely exquisite and we wanted people to be able to see the level of detail that he spends day after day putting into his artwork. Keeping in Japan, this is Shinichi Suwada. He is 39 years old and works at an institution in Japan. And uh, he, he makes these incredible ceramic beings. 
So these are all completely from his imagination. He's uh, a non-speaking artist, so no one really knows what these things are that he is creating. But more often than not, they're covered in little spikes all over their bodies, as you can see. And then the newer ones have less spikes and are slightly different beings. This looking more like a dragon. This looks like a person with their hands praying. Now the black one is slightly different. It's fired at a lower temperature. These are fired at 1200 degrees. This is fired at only 800 degrees. They're all fired in a wood fired oven in Japan for three days and three nights with the wood constantly being fed so it's kept at the same temperature and then they're left to cool for a week. Sawada is known all over the world for creating these ceramics. He's been in the Venice Biennale, he's had museum shows, and I've just produced a book about him which is also available on my website. But do come and spend some time looking at these incredible creatures that he has created. Moving across the room to see some more ceramics. This is Terence Wilde. Terence is a London-based artist who's completely self-taught in ceramics. He did study textiles in Winchester many years ago, um, but then since then he worked as a bit of a fashion designer and then he's retrained working in um, mental health services and currently works within that setting. He classes himself as an adult survivor and all of his black and white work that you'll see in this exhibition is all about Terence trying to heal and trying to make sense of what's going on in his life. So the ceramics, you can walk around, you can see both sides. He draws on them once they've been fired once, puts glaze on them, adds little bits onto them that he's found, and they're just brilliant. There's also text into them as well. And then if you look at his drawings, they feature the same sort of thing. So quite often he draws just on paper, sometimes on canvas, more recently on plates. But they're very fine details in black pen featuring words that he might be associating with what might be happening in his life at that particular moment in time. This piece is called Equipose. It's absolutely stunning. It's to do with um, some vertigo feelings that he had at the time and how other people were treating him. These plates are actually a new technique that he's been doing recently called Scrofito, where he's uh, made the plate himself, then he's painted it black and scratched back into it to reveal the colour of the clay underneath. So this one's called Queer as a Fish. Brilliant. And then there's a couple more really heavily detailed um, that are quite recent pieces. This one being made last year called Off Kilter. As we travel around the space, this is Raymond Morris. Raymond is in his early 70s. And about 40 years ago, he started being creative when he saw a spirit emerge from one of his paintings. He says that being creative is a very meditative process for him. And so these are actually put onto his kitchen cupboard doors from the flat that he lives in. He took them down, feeling very inspired. Um, he's drawn on a piece of paper that he's trapped behind some acrylic. He may have drawn over the top of it, and then he's added other things that he's found around the house, some bits that he's cut out of the newspapers. These are actually quite old works now. These are around 2004 to 2006 kind of time period. But his drawing style still remains very similar to this day. And he still works to this day, even though he's in his 70s now, which is very inspiring. If we come around a bit more, this is another Japanese artist uh, who unfortunately passed away in 2010 when he was in his late 60s. He actually only started drawing when he was in his 60s. He's lived in institutions in Japan all throughout his life. And he draws on cardboard. Now, the reason that he draws on cardboard is he used to draw on his bed, leaning on his lap. And if he drew on paper, he used to go through the paper quite often. So this cardboard is taken from the kitchen within the institution. So quite often on the back, it might be some food packaging or something like that. And then he felt like he can really press on quite hard with the crayon and it won't go through the cardboard. And always they feature the colour red because red was his favourite colour. It was the colour of happiness for him. Beautiful. This is Robert Fisher. Robert Fisher is in his mid 40s and he, for two days a week until quite recently, he was going to a studio called Geso 20 in Germany. 
He also um, is non-speaking, but does these beautiful drawings, again using lots of different materials. And quite often, uh, letters or symbols appear in his work, sometimes back to front, um, always layered up. So he starts with some sort of structure on the page, and then the structure builds, the colours develop, and then the text kind of comes over the top of the pictures, and the colours really pop off the page. Um, so this is Robert Fisher. And before we leave this room, we just wanted to share with you Kate Bradbury, the final bit of Kate Bradbury's work, um, this series of people, again, that she's made from things that she's found on the streets of London, and also someone she knew was getting rid of an old piano. So all of the bodies are actually made from piano keys, and then all the other bits, like the valves and the light bulbs and stuff, are all things that she's found on the streets, and she's created this incredible body of people which we're really lucky to have. And this is the first time I've ever been shown. Let's go through to the final room. So we'll start with this set of four drawings by Joe Goldman. Joe is an artist that attends Project Artworks, which is in Hastings in the UK, and he's been going there for approximately four years now. When he works, he often has a series of three or four pieces of paper, sometimes five, on the wall and a selection of materials that he can choose from and quite often he'll start and he'll walk along making a mark on each piece and then choosing a different material and starting that process again. So you can really see with the paint how it flows, how the mark then flows onto the next page and the absolutely beautiful pieces that work individually or as a set. But we've hung them quite close together because this is how he would work on them in the studio and we felt like it was the right thing to do for his work. And it just looks stunning. This is Dan Miller. Dan is also 60, I believe, and he's been attending Creative Growth, which is an art studio in America for 30 years now. And he's developed his style over the years. We're really lucky to have four pieces in this exhibition. And again, like many of the artists, he might start with a pen as a base layer and then the piece builds up over time. So Dan, again, is quite non-speaking, but when he was younger, his family and those around him taught him some words and some numbers so that he could communicate with people and he used to write them down and repeat them and repeat them. So when you see this work, there are often words repeated and repeated over and over the top of each other in the different mediums that he uses. Sometimes he draws um, flat on the table, sometimes he'll draw standing up. I believe this one says Paris several times, over and over again. The studio that works with him will know more about the words that he writes and quite often the words that he chooses to repeat. I saw in another piece that he did, he used the word toilet over and over again, which made me smile. But the colour choices as well are incredible. Dan was also featured at the Venice Biennale in 2017, I believe, and often has solo shows in contemporary galleries across America. This is Naina Kalu. Naina works out of Action Space, which is a studio in London. She came here yesterday and created two incredible drawings on the wall that she's going to work back into very soon when she comes back for a second visit, but she's here all day yesterday doing these beautiful drawings, working across one, changing her material, and then coming to work across the second one. And she works in a very sweeping motion, and it got smaller and smaller as it came down into the corner, and then she would change the material, and then come and work on this one in a very similar format. She also creates incredible sculptures, so Naina was invited to create some work at the Royal Academy Summer Show uh, last year, which has just finished. And she has created massive sculptural pieces in various different places. Studio Voltaire invited her to build this kind of big environment in a space they had in Mayfair. So these are some incredible sculptures that we've got for this show. And again, you can see the circular wrapping motion, very similar to her drawings that comes through. She loves working in tape. VHS tape is also very much important to her work. There's also fabric underneath some of these pieces as well. And we've installed it like this because she was playing around in the studio with some of the facilitators 
and seem to kind of come into some sort of shape arrangement like this, which is why we chose to display it in a very similar way to how we believe she would have wanted to do it. Because again, Nate is a non-speaking artist. The final works in this space are two artists that I've already mentioned to you. So these are smaller versions of Eric Derichette, who had that big blue and green piece in the first room. So these are just beautiful small pieces, again, where you can see how these two hands have worked across the pieces. Different mediums being used, a lot of pencil. As I mentioned, he's gone over it so many times, occasionally it rips. Beautiful colour combinations. Sometimes there's paint in the background, the pencil then gets worked over the top and the oil pastel and that sort of thing. Then the final piece in this room is one of a series of five drawings from Joe Goldman, who did the series of four at the beginning of the room. And we thought this piece was just really beautiful as a standout piece by itself. And his colour choices were just exquisite, so we just decided just to frame one of the series. So this is the end of my tour of the show. Following this, there's going to be some panoramic shots for you to enjoy it without me in the space, but thank you for listening.